Hello everybody and welcome to a rainy, cold and chilly day in Bavaria. I hope you all had a great Christmas, good new year and now we've got to get ready for the new season so January is a great time to start and uh, I'm going to show you five ways to get rid of that dreaded slice. Back in a moment. Welcome back and as I said in the introduction now's a great time of year to get rid of that pesky slice if not to play 18 holes in rain and wind and cold. The slice is probably the biggest bugbear of all golfers and there's obviously a load of reasons why you slice the golf ball. Physically it's quite simple. The club head is moving in the di different direction to where the club face is pointing. If the club head is moving to the left of the target and the club face is moving, pointing to the right of the target then the ball is going to curve to the right. But it will even happen if the club head is moving at the target and the ball is and the club face is pointed to the right of the target. So basically as soon as you get a discrepancy between where the club face is pointing and where the club head is traveling at the moment of impact, you're going to impart um, a slice spin on the golf ball and the ball's going to disappear to the right hand side. And there's only really one thing you can do about that at the time and that's aim further to the left. If you're wanting to change that though um, quickly, the simplest way is to change the point or the direction that the club face is pointing at impact. Now you can either do that in the address position by changing the way that you address the golf ball, literally turning the club face to the left and changing your grip slightly. So if you think of the club being square in your hands and simply close it but leave your hands where they are, then that will make a, a quick fix which will get rid of the, of the slice, simply by getting the club face to point in the same direction as the club is moving at the moment of impact. Doing that obviously isn't going to be anything that's going to save your game for the next season. So I would definitely um, recommend that you work on one of the following fixes. There's a lot of reasons for a slice, but the majority of them actually happen in the downswing. And if you look at the downswing, what's actually happening is to move the golf, golf club path from outside the line to inside the line, you're almost kind of throwing it out there. Now obviously this can be a mistake that your arms and hands are making, but often the mistake will start far lower than that. We're all trying to turn our hips because apparently Every golf professional in the world says this is something that you've got to do and we can see in the videos on YouTube that all of the good players are doing it. But when somebody tells you to turn your hips, you try to turn around a central axis. What you want to be trying to do is to keep this right hip back. When you actually look at the downswing, when I start the downswing and start to turn my left hip, my right hip will want to come forward. There's absolutely no way that I can turn my right hip forward without my shoulder and my arms coming forward with it. And when they swing down, they're coming from outside to in. Intuitively, I'm going to try and steer the ball straight and that's basically going to impart slice spin on the ball and the ball's gonna to disappear to the right-hand side. So the first thing you want to do is to get yourself either an SMS like I've got here, or stick a chair and put your bum against the uh, chair's back and get used to starting the downswing and keeping your right bum cheek on the chair as long as you can until your left bum cheek goes around the corner and then it can come over. This will give you the feeling of waiting a little bit long to transfer your weight. We're not wanting to kind of bump and turn as we hear a lot more to really try and keep the right hip back and quiet. If you work on that, then that will take away the first reason for your slice. If you still find that you're slicing the ball, it could well be happening a little bit further up. And the next station is really your shoulder. So you get your hips working correctly, the left hip is coming back, the right hip is stable, the right shoulder, however, is rotating. And this will happen again because what happens is as your hips rotate, they rotate on a pretty flat plane. And your shoulders say, well, that's nice, we'll follow them. Unfortunately, that will pull your arms, hands, and clubs to the outside 
and the jolly old golf club will be moving again from the outside to the in. So to get rid of that, you want to have the feeling at the start of the downswing, as you start to rotate your hips, you also want to be crunching your oblique muscles, this is the side stomach muscles and your right chest muscle to get this right shoulder down as quickly as possible. It's not enough to basically, or in, in fact, it, it might work, but it, it's not gonna help your game to tilt to get the right shoulder down. You really wanna have a feeling of kind of getting these muscles to contract and pull the right shoulder down while your hips are rotating on this flatter plane. So your hips are doing this and your right shoulder is doing that. And it's doing it because you're basically pulling in the muscles of your right side and, and letting the muscles of your left side extend. And that will get the right shoulder down and pull the club down along the line. The third reason is probably the most common reason you're simply starting from the top of your hands. In the backswing, consciously or unconsciously, you're bending the elbow, you're bending the wrists in order to get the club back on plane and also to get the power that you're going to need in the downswing. Unfortunately, when you get to the top of your swing though, what happens is a lot of people release these angles too early, start to accelerate the club with the arms and hands and that of the obvious effect of swinging the club from out to in. So what you want to try and do at the top is to keep the angle in the right elbow and wrist and just allow the body to turn and pull the arms down. This is a feeling of being passive in the arms and not hitting at the ball. Allow the body to rotate and to pull the arms and hands down with it. These are the three major reasons for a slice in a golf swing. There is a fourth or fifth in that case, and that is basically your need to hit the ball a long way. If you're trying to hit the ball a long way, and unconsciously, unless you used to throw javelins or, or discus as a child, then what's actually happening is your unconscious believes it can move the club faster with its arms or with your arms than you can do with your body. And for that reason, the fifth way of getting rid of the slice is simply to get used to throwing the arms on club through the ball using the body. And there's no better way than that than to just simply take some kind of a weight I use in a, an impact bag here and we throw the impact bag, keeping the arms passive. By doing this, I'm telling my body that I've got enough energy in my body to throw the club. I don't have to hit at it with my arms. So the final cure for your slice is almost more a mental thing than it is a physical thing. I'm trying to convince my mind that I've got more power in my body than I have in my arms, that I can generate enough speed in my body to catapult the arms and hands and club through the golf ball and to get it moving in that direction or in that way. And that way you'll find that the club is basically getting pulled around and the inertia on the club will actually make the club move back behind you because of this rotational speed of your body. All five of these things will work. You can close the club face, you can slow down or, or stabilize your right hip in the, back, in the downswing. You can get your right shoulder moving down instead of out, and you can get your arms to become passive in the downswing. Finally, make sure that it's your body which is generating the speed and not your arms and hands. And who knows, in 2018, you might be hitting golf balls straight down the middle of the fairway without a, without a slice. If this video has helped you, then hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Um, all of these things will help me to get back more often, give you more tips to help your golf. Don't forget the one biggest tip is that this is a hobby, this is your, your free time that you're doing. Try not to look at it as if this is life and death. 
Enjoy the game, it's a great game. Get out there, enjoy your golf, and I'll see you next time.